Hello and welcome to the Huntsman World Senior Games Active Life. My name is Kyle Case and I'll be your host on this amazing journey as we attempt attempt to help you get the most out of your life. Tongue a little tight there this Just, morning or yeah, this afternoon, to, huh, Kyle? I need to loosen it up. Yes. But, uh, thank you. Joining me in the studio today is, of course, my co-pilot, Jeff Harding. Jeff. Kyle. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I am excellent. Thanks for being with us. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure. <laughs> okay. Enough with the mutual admiration <laughs> stuff. Let's move on. <laughs> so, Jeff, the name of our show, as you well know, is The Active Life. It's not the Jeff Harding show? It, you know, that's not a bad idea. No. That's not a bad idea. Yes, I do know we'll, that, Kyle. We'll yes. take that under consideration. <laughs> but uh, for now, at least, yes, for the time it, being, uh, it is uh, the active life. And actually, I like that name. Yeah. Let's keep it. Yeah, well, and it's, uh, you know, we try really hard to, uh, as the intro says, help people get the most out of their life. Mm-hmm. And would you say, Jeff, do you think that the active life would probably be a happy life? It is for me. Yeah. I know I'm happier when I'm active and as opposed to being sedentary. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I found an article in Time Magazine. That was entitled Seven Timeless Ways to Be Happy at Any Age. Great. And I thought, well, that would fit right in with what, we, uh, what we're what we trying to accomplish. That, that's perfect. Perfect so let me, fit. Let me share these with you, and you tell me what you think on each one of these. Number one, okay? I'm ready. Prepare for your own old age. You know, th- there's so much truth to that because we tend to just float along yep. and let life happen to us where we're going to be much happier if we plan for and prepare for life to happen. Perfect, perfect. I I couldn't agree more with that. It says, the most important thing is not to let age hit you suddenly without notice. You must face the fact that it is coming and that your children, who seem to be so slow about growing up, will one day leave you for families of their own, and it's best to be prepared. To now, be prepared. You're, you're a few years younger than me, Kyle. I will warn you that it does hit you when you're not looking, <laughs> when you but you can still it. know that it's going to. When you least expect it. Yes. Well, you know, one, one, of the, uh, one of our athletes at the Huntsman World Senior Games once told my wife and I, because we were admiring it, how well he was playing racquetball, and right. boy, it's amazing you can do this at your age. And he said, you know what, if you want to be active at age 60 then you need to start at age 50. And if you want to be active at age 50, then you better start at age 40. And if you want to be active at 40, you better start at 30. That's right. You know, that is so true. That's right. That's so true. It's being being prepared. Mm -hmm. Number two, broaden your interests. I've seen that in a lot of folks, uh, older folks, that they have a single interest. And and if if something happens, then... To to that thing, whatever it is. Yes, then then their world seems to come to a standstill. Yeah, yeah. So, So again, just preparing yourself, but broadening your interests gives you the opportunity to enjoy life more fully. And and, and look for different genres. Look at the arts. Right. Look at at theater. Look Look at different things that you may not have had an interest in at a younger age. Well, it's interesting you should say that. The article itself says, the manual worker should attempt to should make an attempt to learn why cultural matters are so important to the intellectuals. And the intellectual should begin learning the pleasures of working with his or her hands. So there is something to that. That's right. Number three, focus on independence. To age happily, you must learn to be emotionally independent. In this respect, you can learn much from the Oriental's ability to meditate and occupy themselves, even with small things like paper folding. It's also a good idea to learn other kinds of independence to be able to cook for yourself, take care of yourself, entertain yourself so that you'll not be helpless in these important skills. And again, I think that makes sense. That is important. In fact, that's one of the things that uh, young mothers, if they don't let their children learn how to be self-entertaining, self... It becomes a problem, Yes, and then then they become the entertainment 24-7, so... Yeah, yeah. Great advice. Number four, start improving your health. Now, I kind of alluded to this earlier. Right. You know, you got to, if you want to be healthy later on, you got to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, uh, it is a fact that most chronic illnesses begin to develop during youth. Yes. And modern medicine puts the 70-year-old diabetic and the 17-year-old diabetic on the same diet. So take care of yourself now. Get used to eating and drinking moderately. And in your old age, you'll be far happier. That's true. And, and if you haven't been doing that... Now's the time to start. That's one of the more intuitive things. I right. mean, some of the things we talk about are counterintuitive. Right. But that is very intuitive. Seems to make a lot of sense, yes, right? Yes, it does. Number five, listen to your body as it changes. And it does talk to you. <laughs> It'll tell it, it'll you, right? It'll communicate very clearly. It will tell you. Uh, don't cling to foolishly and illogically um, act, uh, illogical activities that you've done in your youth. Uh, there does come a time. Now, now, you get to decide when that time is. Well, sometimes you do, but sometimes, sometimes it's your body. For example, I I was playing basketball in my um, late forties. Yeah, 
And in my like mind, you were in your late teens. Well, in my mind, I was like, <laughs> but I was actually playing basketball, and my mind contrived a move that would let me get to the basket. And I told my body to do it. Yeah. And it just laughed at me. It didn't. It didn't obey. <laughs> no, it did not. I looked pretty silly when I fell down. But yeah. But you do. I mean, you. You have to be prepared. You do for that. need to listen. You do need yes. to listen to your body, and and as you said, Jeff, it will talk to you. It will. Yes, talk. it will. Number six, develop a healthy sense of self-respect. Very no, important. No, I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. It says, bear in mind that your opinion of yourself is often needlessly dependent on the opinion of people around you. If people act towards you as if you are old or useless at whatever age, you may come to think of yourself that way, but there is no reason to. You are as old as your capabilities, and you should assess yourself accurately. And in, you should never let someone else determine who you are. Again, at any age. At any age, self-determining. Yep, yep. Right. very good. The last one. This is probably my favorite one. I'm I excited. Like this one. Number seven. This has been good. Eat what you want within reason. Now, how how, how many diets or fad diets or plans or whatever are out there that cut out this or cut out that or don't Mm -hmm. do this or that. I like this approach. Well, I do too, especially since often our body, going back to the listen to your bodies, our bodies will tell us what they're, what is craving. Yeah. And And mine is telling me oftentimes maple bars. Well, there's probably, (laughs) there's probably something in that maple bar that that, I need. That it needs. I'm sure. I'm sure. Maple or something, sugar, (laughs) but in all seriousness, um, Pregnant women, when yeah. they have cravings, yeah, it's really their body craving it. something, yeah. and so we, we really do need to, to eat what we feel comfortable eating. Yeah, and then and, and obviously within reason, but, but well, I, the thing I like about this, excess, Jeff, is yes. that it's, it's, uh, it's truly a sustainable plan. Oh, very it's much. It's not like, okay, I'm going to never, ever, ever eat another spoonful of sugar ever. It's just never going to happen. I'm not going to do it. Of course, that, it's going to happen. Well, it's going to happen. And it's going to happen in places where you don't expect it. Yeah. That, that slice of bread you're having is going to have yeah. sugar in it. So if you just say to yourself, I'm going to eat what I like, I'm going to eat what I want, but I'm going to do it in a, in a moderate way. In, in moderation. And, you mm-hmm. know, as you say, all things in moderation, um, you're going to have a happy life. Yes, you are. According to Time Magazine. And you're not going to feel like you're uh, deprived. Deprived, exactly. Because sometimes that creates a greater craving and, and desire Well, that's for generally what happens yes. with, the, with the diets. You know, you go on this diet, you totally limit and restrict yourself, and it's unsustainable. Mm-hmm. You get to that point where you just, you can't take it anymore, and then you start the downfall. I so. mean, if you go on an air diet, if you stop breathing air, it's not going to take long before you're <laughs> going to be craving air really badly. There comes a point, It just right? happens. There comes a point. Well, anyway, seven ways that we can have happiness in our active life. Great find on that article, yeah, Kyle. Yeah. Well, if there was ever a group of people who, on average, to me at least, seem to be happy, it's the athletes of the Huntsman World Senior Games. Don't oh, you agree with that? You know what? It's, you're hard-pressed to find somebody, <clears throat> unless they just lost the gold medal game, <laughs> who's not really happy. And even sometimes the silver medal winners are, are, are okay with things, yeah, too. In a few so, minutes. Yeah, yeah, we'll, say, yeah let, we'll, we'll say sting, the idea. Let the sting wear yeah. off. Well, our special guest today joining us by phone from Logan, Utah, is one of these amazing and happy athletes, Bob Marabella. He actually lives in Logan, but I I should say he's joining us from Arizona. He's at uh, some of the spring training baseball games. He's a multi-sport medal-winning athlete at the Huntsman World Senior Games, and we're excited to have you on board. Bob, are you there? Yes, I am. Well, thank you for joining us today. Oh, it's a delight. I'm I'm. Uh, excited to talk to you guys. Well, we appreciate that you were willing to to pull yourself away from some of those major league baseball games and visit with us. It's uh, it's it's a joy for us to have you on the show, and we look forward to getting to know you a little bit better. Good, great. Bob has participated in the games for a number of years. He's, as I said, a multi-sport athlete. He's played softball. He's ran our road races, and he's even done the triathlon. So uh, once again, we're we're excited to visit with you. So Bob, tell us just to get to know you a little bit better. Have you always been involved in sports in your whole life? You know, I've always been a runner. Um, different times. All made your book retailers uh- serious than others. You know, when I was single, I was serious, and then married and had kids, and kind of put it on the back burner. And then, uh, as my kids got a little older, I thought, hey, I want to get more serious with running. Um, but I, I, I mixed in, you know, basketball and softball and and different things. I've always been a pretty active person. Well, that's great. That's great. Your, your, uh, experience mirrors many 
uh, people that we interact with at the Huntsman World Senior Games. They they kind of start out in whatever sport it is. Yours was running. Other people play different sports, and and then life happens. You know, you yeah. you, you grow up, you get married, you've got professional responsibilities. But I appreciate that you've you found a way, Bob, to kind of stay active. So so you said you always were a runner. Um, you know, as you got older and you started getting back into running. Did you did you start with smaller races, marathons? Uh, where where did you kind of jump back into it? You know, I um, in my in my twenties, I was the marathon runner, and then uh, as I tailed off my running, I became more of a five k runner, and uh, have pretty much stayed in that uh, that realm of five k's, ten k's, and then. Um, that way I could blend in triathlon training and different things. But I say all that and I think I'm slowing down. And then <laughs> I, uh, I decided to run a marathon with my son and we were excited to qualify for the Boston marathon. So I'm, uh, four weeks away from, uh, running the Boston marathon in April. And, uh, so I'm now I'm on, I'm kind of ramping up training for a few weeks, mm-hmm. uh, to get prepared for that. So it's like one thing kind of leads to another. You, you run one marathon, and all of a sudden you find yourself running more marathons. That's why I'm never going to run my first. <laughs> you see where that takes you, right? That's right. It, it, it goes nowhere good. <laughs> well, Bob, congratulations. Yeah, I've been thinking about that as I've been training. I'm like, why am I running a marathon? Yeah. These 5Ks are so much easier to train. <laughs> well, I'm sure that there are times when that thought crosses your mind. But congratulations. I mean, that's, yes, that's amazing to to have qualified for the race and which, which, um, which was the qualifier that you ran? I ran the top of Utah, uh, up in Logan, Utah. Okay. And your, uh, your time and your son's time was good enough to qualify for Boston. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty exciting time to get in. There's 30,000 people, but just because you qualify doesn't necessarily mean you get in. Right. So they, they take, like 15 minutes ahead of your qualifying and 10 and five. And so, um, I just barely made it. They had to cut off one minute and 12 seconds below qualifying. Wow. And I was wow. two and a half minutes. Oh, so you were right there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all you, all you needed to do was stop once and tie your shoes and the madness could have been over. It would have been over, yeah. <laughs> no, really. All joking aside, Bob, that is an accomplishment, and and once again, congratulations. Now, were you running Thanks. with your son the entire time, or did you end up splitting up? Or no, he. You know, it's one of these things that he came home from an internship. He was a student at the University of Utah, and he said, "Hey, by the way, Dad, I'm running a marathon in five weeks." And. So I thought, oh, my gosh, if he's running a marathon, I better start training. So <laughs> I went into this crazy training mode to to make sure if he qualified for Boston, I would qualify. And right. so we ran together the first eight miles, and then, and then you left him in the he dust. ran an amazing time. He ran yeah. under three hours. Oh, and, that's uh, pretty impressive. I ended up running three hours and 26 minutes. Which is still amazing. I mean, that's a 26.2 yeah. mile run in three hours and a few minutes. That's amazing. Just amazing. My, my 3.2 would be 3.2 days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful. So good luck when you, uh, when you head out over to Boston. That's exciting. We'll be cheering for you. So you say about four weeks away, and then uh, you're going to hit the ground in Boston. Yeah, I actually got, uh, I want to get through the marathon and then I'm going, as soon as I get home, uh, in the first of May, I'm going into my Huntsman triathlon training. So, which have, is the, of course, I've the, the more important myself over the summer to, uh, to decrease my bike time in the triathlon. Uh-huh. And, uh, so I, I've kind of got a whole summer plan, but put in place. Well, good. Good for you. Uh, this is interesting. I, I think a lot of people are aware of what a triathlon is. Um, it's, of course, you you swim and then you bike and then you run. But I'm interested, Bob, can you maybe share with us just briefly what your plan is? How does one go about preparing for a triathlon? Maybe if you've never done one before or if you have, but you'd really like to increase your times. What's your plan that you go, that you put into place? You know, I just uh, I think the most important thing is you ha- you can't go into it so aggressively that, that it becomes a chore. Um, 
So I kind of, I, I put a plan together that kind of mixes and matches different things. I might uh, ride the bike on Monday, take Tuesday off, and then maybe swim on Wednesday and run on Thursday. And and so I mix and match different things. Some days I'll, I'll do a, a small run and I'll swim some laps. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I just try to mix it up. Um, I love to have my wife take me somewhere and drop me off so I can, uh, you know, see new scenery or uh-huh. just change things up a little bit. Um, well, and you're also, just you're also fine, just, just finding fun things to, to make the training exciting. Yeah. Does, does she leave breadcrumbs so you can find your way home? Does she blindfold yeah, you first? It, it, it gets dark, and she she's like, "Where are you?" And <laughs> does she uh, does she put on a blindfold and spin you around several times, and then uh, let you go and see if you can find your way back? You know, just add a degree of difficulty. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> oh, she took me out last summer, and it, everything looked great. We were out in the uh, uh, at the bird refuge uh, west of Brigham City, Utah, and. Uh, I got off the bike and she took off and the mosquitoes must have sensed I was there because I had a thousand mosquitoes on me. A positive blood type. And I'm like, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> now, just, just curious. Do you, do you do most of your training in pools or in open water for swimming? Uh, in pools. Yeah. I, I, um, I have access to a, a, a swimming pool in the area. So the, the, it's not very long lap wise, but you know, it's just more of a timing thing. Yeah. Swimming mm-hmm. portion of a triathlon is not very long. You know, it's usually 10 minutes or so or less. Yeah. The focus, because I'm, I'm, uh, uh, so comfortable with the running, the focus is getting on the bike and really putting in some, some miles. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a, a great plan. And I think it's something that we could, um, you know, probably all learn from, as we uh, approach whatever it is in our life, whether it's a triathlon or, or anything else. If you're just joining us, you're listening to the Huntsman World Senior Games Active Life, and we're visiting with Bob Marabella, who is a multi-sport athlete at the Huntsman World Senior Games. And we've talked about two of your sports, your, your running and your triathlon endeavors. Uh, tell us a little bit about softball. How did you get involved in softball, and is that something that you still play, or have you kind of retired from that scene? You know, every year I think I've retired. Uh, <laughs> I I just uh, have focused on running, and I'm an empty nester now. So my wife and I, I just love to find a 5K race somewhere, and so it takes me kind of away from the softball. But it seems like uh, uh, once or twice a year I get a phone call from my friends that are saying, hey, uh, can you just play one tournament with yeah. us? And that's basically what's happened the last four years uh, down at the Huntsman Games is they've called and said, come on, just come out of retirement one more time. And <laughs> I played left field my whole life. So, uh, you know, when you're, when you're able to run and you can catch a ball, boy, that's a, a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> that is, of course, you could always be the designated base runner. Yes. Oh, and that's, that happens quite often is they let you run for somebody every inning and once they figure out that, hey, this guy's in pretty good shape, then they love to say, will you run for me? Will you yeah. run for me? <laughs> you become even more popular. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's great. So you're, have you have you found a team that you'll be playing with at the games this year, or, or are you still waiting for that phone call? I'm waiting for that phone call. I, I kind of am thinking about expanding uh, into maybe some of the track and field events. So... Um, really not sure. I, I definitely am doing the triathlon and I, I love the competition in the 5k run. Uh, but we're kind of going to see what, what other sports I might want to get into. Well, that that's fun. And of course with 27 to choose from, just don't, just don't try to get into pickleball because it's too late for that. We've actually had that, closed that one's closed down, and yeah. bowling is probably going to be closing soon. So if you want to do that, get in it right now. Uh, I'm just curious, Bob. Have have you had have you have you experienced any major injuries or injuries that have slowed you down through your uh, athletic career? You know, it's interesting when you talked about your Time Magazine article about listening to your body. Yeah. Um, that is probably the single most important thing I've done when I turned fifty. Was 
thinking, I, I don't need to run seven days a week and play basketball and play softball. I've got to listen to my body. And once I did that, um, a good example, I ran a 19-mile race on Saturday and uh, bounced back and ran a five-mile run yesterday. And, and I came home and told my wife, I'm not running the next two days. I can tell that I haven't fully recovered. Yeah. And once I figured that out and, and kind of put my pride to the side by saying, oh, I'm, I'm invincible. Yeah. Um, then I have, have had very, very uh, few problems with injuries. No, I do have to let you know there's a downside to learning to listen to your body, especially if your wife finds out because she's going to expect you to start listening to her then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it is good advice. She actually knows more about my body than I yeah. do. She's always <laughs> saying, you know what? You haven't had enough lunch or you haven't had enough water. Aren't they, I mean, we, wives are, I mean, we, we joke about it, but wives are really wonderful, and we love them to death, and we appreciate everything they do for us. Absolutely. That is, that is for sure. So um, I'm, you, you've got kind of a, an interesting story, Bob, of how you got introduced to the game. So we're running a little short on time, but I'm interested in hearing how you – how you came and participated for the first time in the Huntsman World Senior Games? Well, I lived in St. George years ago and uh, had, had heard about it, but I was much younger at the time. And then I moved away and I received a phone call. And, uh, and in fact, the, the phone call said, are you, are you old yet? <laughs> and I, I said, what do you mean? He says, I need a softball player. Are you old yet? And, uh, I kind of laughed and thought, oh, my gosh, that's right. I just turned 50. That would be a fun thing to do. And uh, it, it, that, that's kind of how I stepped into the whole thing. So you, you came down to the games to play the first time as a softball player? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. so there was that phone call. The phone yeah, call that came in. and then I just, <laughs> once I got a taste of it, and I have to say this, the atmosphere in the senior games is the most remarkable thing I've ever been around. The, the way that everybody treats each other, uh, the camaraderie, you know, you slide into second base and the shortstop runs over and picks you it up. Helps you and I just loved it. I just, I just craved it. I thought, Oh my gosh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And uh, it's why I come back every year. I just love that part of the, of the games. Well, thank you. We, we hope that that is the experience that athletes have. That's, that's the way that we want it to be. The, the, games, um, the mission of the Games is to foster worldwide peace, health, and friendship. And I, we have found that our athletes have really, um, they just exemplify those, those uh, characteristics, and it's wonderful. Well, Bob, that's about all the time that we've got today. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Bob. Oh, it was great talking to you guys. Ha- have a great day. All right, you too. So as we mentioned uh, earlier in the show, that registration is open, and I want to just emphasize that. If you are 50 years or older, you can participate, just like Bob has uh, for the past several years. And And experience what he experienced. Yeah, and experience that same thing. We have 27 different sports, and you can visit our website at www.seniorgames.net, and there you'll find rules, schedules, and you can also register for any one of those 27 sports, except, as you said, pickleball that's right which has reached its participation and cap. maybe bowling if you're not fast enough you better hurry if you're interested in bowling but once again that is www.seniorgames.net and you can register today and we encourage you to do so yes sir and also don't forget to tune in next thursday where we'll continue to explore the active life on am 1450 or fm 93.1 for those who are listening live for those of you who are outside the area and are not listening live you can listen to this and any of our previous episodes right from our website. Once again, I'm going to give that to you. It is www.seniorgames.net. And I'd like to leave you with a quote from a previous guest on our show, the man behind Project America Run, Mike Errett. He says, and I think this is great advice, never open the door to doubt. You'll never get it shut. Until next Thursday, stay active. Bye, everybody.